so you can get the crafted whisper of the worm completely as a solo player optionally this is going to show you how to do this solo flawless as well but obviously it's not necessary to get the gun first thing before we jump into the mission we're going to start with the build i'm recommending void hunter for this we've got trappers ambush vanishing step Echoes of Obscurity, Starvation, Persistence, and Harvest. I've also got Deadfall Tether. And then these abilities also have all of this uh, Destiny Item Manager link in the description. If you don't want to list all this, you just want to slap on the build and go. That works perfectly fine too. As far as our weapons, Malfeasance is amazing in this because it does increase damage against taken enemies. And when paired with Lucky Pants, you basically one-shot all four of the bosses at the end of the mission. I also love a disorienting grenades grenade launcher, and then I like having the solar fixed odds because it synergizes quite well with the seasonal mods. Speaking of which, make sure you have solo operative on for this to make it 15% easier. As far as mod setup goes, specking into a lot of kinetic stuff for the malfeasance, got connect siphon, loader, and surge. And then a couple of various other things for damage resistances. I really like two arcs because there's a lot of arc damage, especially from the bosses in the final room. And then you got a decent amount of solar damage as well with the taken vandal snipers and the knight that spits fire out of his face and whatnot. So that's about it for loadout. Without further ado, let's hop into the mission. And I'm going to show y'all pretty much where to go, how to play it perfectly so that you don't die a single time. Um, or even if you do die, if you're just trying to do the solo to go ahead and get the craftable gun itself. You'll be good to go. Um, alternatively, or not alternatively rather, but if you would like, if you have an eager edge sword, that can make the beginning section, the parkouring section, a lot more quick. I'm not going to be using that in this video just so there's a bit more clarity on where I'm going. Um, I think going too fast might confuse a little bit of people. Um, but, you know, if you have a bit more familiarity with this mission, then you can go ahead and throw that on. It'll speed things up for you a little bit. So first things first, we're going to come over here to the left and we're going to kind of jump around that little structure right there. We're going to run into this taken centurion. Maybe he pushes us, maybe he doesn't. Um, either way, going to eventually kill him. And we're going to hop in this blight, start shooting at it. Obviously, make sure that we kill it so we can go ahead and then fall down the hole. So we'll hop down here, stagger our jump, and then we're going to make our way through these tunnels. And I also want to mention while I'm running through this, if you uh, did the Whisper mission way back in the year one days, or maybe even the year two days of Destiny 2, and you know a lot of the pathing, it's pretty much identical. Um, so if if you have pretty strong recollection of exactly like where to go, um, you can 100% feel free to... Um, simply skip this part. I'll have chapters in the video down below so you know exactly where to go for like the combat section. Up to you. Um, but obviously you're just kind of following the path that I'm following so far. Taking our time with our jumps. And then once we get to this section, we're actually going to have to round this corner. So I kind of like to use my bunny hop to position over there and then use my jumps to make the rest of the way. Um, fun fact about this section as well, I'm going to actually wait for this piece to push out because I was a little late on getting through, but you can actually go two at once um, if you use your class ability. You can use your dodge without falling out of the cubby and it allows you to kind of do two at the same time. Once we do that, we'll hop over to the left over here and then we'll kind of slip underneath that uh, semi-circle portion, hop here on this elevator cube, careful of uh, this little thing that's going to go back and forth. We're aiming for that platform right there. So we'll just go ahead and hop, and then you'll hug the left wall as you round this corner. See exactly where you're supposed to go. I'm going to run through here. This part will trip you up a little bit from a visual perspective. Kind of makes you want to tilt your head just a tiny bit. Definitely going to shove you a little bit there if you try to be fast and go over it, but nothing too crazy. For this part, I like to wait until the taken things have gone. Then I go ahead and hop on those platforms. Nice thing about Hunter Jump is you can kind of suspend yourself in the air for a decent bit of time. Slide under here. Again, in our situation, we can use our dodge just to get through that a little bit more quickly. Wait for this blast to go off. Hop on over here. In this section, this door will uh, open and close. So I'm just going to go ahead and run right through there. I kind of wanted to stagger. I wanted to wait for a brief moment to see if it was going to close on me, but I was good. Once you're in this room, you're aiming for that back right one is where you're headed. So we're going to head over here to the right side. Now we're going to hop over here. Keep running all the way along until I arrive at the back right. 
and then we'll hop right down there. Then in this room, it's very large. You don't have to do a single thing in here. You can literally hop down. You see these green rocks right below you. Hop past them, turn around 180 degrees, look to the left of the rocks, and you can crouch right through here. Then we're gonna bounce over here, take a hard 90 degree right. Go ahead and roll on through these sections. Listen to Zol as he talks to you, and spits whatever nonsense. Just gotta kind of hug the left side as you keep sprinting. Then once you get to this little diving board, you see the little light. It's a little glowing yellow. Tells you where to go. Hop underneath that uh, that section right there. Take a right. Hop through there. And that is pretty much it for the parkour section. Now we are on to the combat section. Now for the combat section, the first thing I like to do to initiate it is I like to immediately pop my dodge to proc Reaper so that I can kill one Thrall. That'll generate an orb of power to give me Devour through the Echo of Starvation. And now it is pretty much impossible for me to die because all I have to do is keep killing these Thrall. Um, another big tip for this section is when it comes to these Blights, you can jump on top of them to be able to damage them without taking any damage from the Blight itself, which is a massive tip for this mission. Um, so we're just going to continue killing everything. Like I said, we've got Devour, so every single kill is going to refund 100 HP. And then we, of course, have two ways to go invisible if we're ever in a predicament. Um, like I said, though, it's not a massive deal if you... Uh, die if you don't really care about the solo flawless aspect you don't even really get anything for it anyway um it's just triumph doesn't really work an emblem or anything but you know maybe maybe you like to go for accomplishments and things of that nature so if uh, if that sounds like you then go ahead and go for it um so i lost my devour so we're gonna dodge real quick i actually have an orb of power sitting right there for some reason which is kind of nice so just pick up the orb real quick that'll give me devour back so i can fight these guys without really having any concern. I don't really know why that captain's teleporting so much, but maybe hop in here, throw a little vortex grenade to kill everything. Like I said, getting on top of these so you don't take damage from the blights is really, really nice. And we're going to finish off this vandal, and then we'll wait for that guy's bubble to go down, pop him in the head, and that should allow us in the next room. Here I love pulling out my blinding grenade launcher, my disorienting grenade launcher, shooting the left side so that these guys are disoriented and then I can push them and they can't do anything to me. Then once I kill them all, I'll turn around and I'll go ahead and disorient the ones on the other side, which makes things super easy. So once we get here, pop that bubble, make sure everything's reloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and reload my machine gun real quick. And then we'll come over here to the right, one shot this night. And then I like to kind of come up here to the right side and start taking out the ads from here. And I kind of, I like to go in a circle almost. If that makes sense. Almost died. Because uh, being a little, being a little reckless. We'll get a finisher on him. And I'm trying to play my life a little bit right now just because I'm a little weak and I don't have Devour active. So I'm thinking I can maybe just target this knight over here across the way. Clean up the rest of these taken hobgoblins. And then it looks like we just have one knight right there to mop up. And I think we have one more enemy. Yep, there he is. I know we had one more hobgoblin. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in this room you actually don't have to kill the blights as well. So as you can see here... We have the door open and ready to go, even though we didn't kill any of the blights. I do like to kill this one, though. You'll see why coming up here in a second, because once we kill this door, if we move in here a little bit, you'll notice that we have those two phalanxes spawn right behind us. So I just like to move in, bait their spawn, and then move back out to be able to kill them real quick. And then first thing we want to do before we enter this room is take out all these taken pop goblins. There's three of them. And then we can use our malfeasance to mop up all of these scions can be a little easier if you'd like. You can go ahead and get your Devour proc Get the Sword of Power over here. Now we have Devour, so I can kind of mindlessly kill all the Scions. They're, it's not really a universe where they can um, out-damage my Devour unless I just don't kill any of them. And then we arrive at the boss room, which, uh, be careful right there. Haven't fallen down there yet, but I would assume that that is how you die, 
so something worth noting. And we're just going to rock and roll with our lucky pants. Go ahead and chip away at all these trash mobs. Then we get our rally flag. So, um, also you can switch to a rocket here if you would like. I'm just going to keep the fixed odds on. Um, I would say heavy weapon here doesn't really matter too much. Most of your big damage is going to come through the mouthpieces. So, whatever works for you. Always, the bosses are, are going to initially spawn, like, up front, and then they'll always teleport to the back of the map. Something worth noting. Um, so, right out the gate, I'm going to try and get a chunk of his HP taken out with my Lucky Pants Malfeasance. As you can see, it absolutely obliterates him. Um, but now, since the adds are kind of on to me, um, I kind of want to shift my focus away from the boss, try and get a orb of power for Devour, and focus on killing some of these adds, especially the Centurions, because they're going to be going taken the uh the axion darts at me which is particularly annoying um if there's no enemies pushing at me it can obviously go ahead and start chipping away at the boss a little bit more um got no ads coming i love playing this right side because you have this big structure right here and if you get overwhelmed you have this little tunnel system that uh gives you plenty of room to work with and enemies typically don't like to push in here anyway so just works really really well um next things next i believe the next box is going to spawn the captain doesn't really matter what order you do them in in my opinion i think you can also i think you might have the option to do all three at the same time if you want if you shoot all three boxes i don't really see a good reason to do that though so that's why you're not really seeing me shoot all three of the boxes but like i said we're just gonna wait until our malfeasance is available chunk him out um now i'm gonna try and maintain my devour procs with this taken captain, you do get some snipers in the back of the map that can be pretty annoying. So I'm actually going to play my invis and my devour and try and work my way back here and take care of the sniper so that he's not just shooting at me while I'm trying to kill his boss. Uh, shoot the disorienting grenade launcher right there. Take out the captain, and then I should be able to finish off, like I said, the malfeasance and lucky pants is ridiculous here. You also notice that after I kill all of the bosses, I get, I think it's four Taken Minotaurs, six maybe. Um, so I like to just take out all these Taken Minotaurs before I hit the next cube and go ahead and start fighting the next boss. So we'll take out everything. And it looks like I have a couple of other trash mobs that spawn, a couple Taken Captains. So we'll go ahead and take those dudes out and then we'll hit our box. I'm going to return back over here to the right side. Like I said, this is where I like to play. And we're going to switch weapons. So we get our Lucky Pants procs. And we're just going to try and take a nice chunk out of him. Now, once I have my out-of-luck debuff, I can go ahead and hit a reload. And then I can circle back. Uh, looks like we have some Taken Wizards here. They're red bars, so they die to a couple shots of Malfeasance. Nothing crazy with this guy. Switch the weapons so we get our Malfeasance damage buff back. And this dude... He's probably dead. So once we kill that guy, we'll have the final boss, the Big Taken Ogre, which will have an immunity shield that is rather easy to deal with. All you have to do is kill his, uh, kill his Taken shielded wizards uh, over here on the side, which is really, really simple. Um, I like using that disorienting grenade launcher to make it so the wizards can't even shoot back at me. So we'll kill them. And then we're going to switch weapons, get our lucky pants going, and we should be able, as you can see, his uh, health bar has a gate at 50%. So with your malfeasance damage, um, you can get there really, really easily in about two rotations. So we're just going to use our invis, come back over here. You'll notice as well that you're going to constantly be getting shadow thrall once you start damaging this guy. Um, I believe they spawn infinitely, so... Um, not a huge point and continuously clearing them. But they actually are kind of nice because you can just go ahead and proc your devour on them when you continuously kill them. Um, and it makes it really easy to stay super, super healthy. Now for this part, once again, once you get 50% HP, his shield will come back up and he'll spawn two more wizards. Um, and he'll also spawn four blights into the arena. You can kill the blights if you'd like, but you don't have to. So, uh, up to you there. I would recommend at least killing this back one, because the boss seems to like to stay on this back one. Um, and so if this blight is up, it makes it kind of a pain to actually deal damage to the boss. Um, so with that killed there, I'm gonna back out a little bit. I'm gonna get my Malfeasance recharged. 
my lucky pants recharged, and hopefully with the tether plus Malfeasance damage buff, we can just go ahead and smoke him. I actually uh, did that wrong because I have out of luck already, which is not supposed to be what happened there. I'm going to go ahead and take out some of these Shadow Thrall to extend my Devour. Not in any huge rush. This left side is nice as well. Similar to the right side, there's another tunnel system over here. So, another nice little spot to be in over here. But, slide over. Keep that Devour going. Reload. I'm going to do a quick dodge so I'm invisible so he doesn't target me right away. Pull a different weapon out. Pull my Malfeasance out to trigger Lucky Pants. And just like that, that dude is dead. Uh, I don't really know how long it took us. Um, I think it was even under 13 minutes to get that sub-13 minute triumph, but right there, you would have your solo flawless clear, um, and you obviously get your Whisper of the Worm uh, craftable weapon right then and there. It was a little over 13 minutes, so you wouldn't get that triumph, but um, with an eager edge sword and a little bit more optimization and not having to worry about explaining everything you're doing. You guys can obviously knock this out in sub 30 minutes. So hopefully that helped. If it did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'll make sure to have another guide just like this uploaded for Outbreak Perfected when Zero Hour drops uh, later and in into the light. So thank you so much for watching. As always, have a great day.